Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to share with you today my top three favorite ways to get that marble effect in your eco resin. So I use aqua resin, but you can use these techniques with any of the other eco or acrylic resins out there in the market. So if you're using Jasmine or Hydroflow or any of those other brands, you can apply these methods and get a very similar or if not the exact same result. So for the first step, we're going to want to measure out our material. I always like to measure out the liquid first. Um, and I'm estimating I need roughly about 100 grams of liquid. So you can see I measured this out to be 102 grams of liquid. And then you can move on to measuring out your material. So with aqua resin and my current working environment, I use 3.2 times as much powder as liquid. So because I used 100 grams of liquid, I need about 320 grams of powder. I'm going to add in a couple of scoops of this white mica powder. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it, and I kind of like um, all of my pieces to have just a little shimmer to it. So I'm going to add that in. The next step will be combining the liquid and the powder together. I like to add a little bit of the powder at a time to the liquid. That's just my personal preference. Um, but I like to do that to try to minimize the amount of clumps that I have. Um, but it does take a lot of mixing. So I always like to kind of tell people like if you think you're done mixing, mix a little bit more because um, you just want to be as thorough as possible here. Since I will be showing you a few different techniques, I am going to separate a little bit of the material ahead of time just because I know which techniques I'm going to use and what I need um, the material for. So I'm going to set a couple aside here. I decided that I wanted to create a terracotta type color uh, that has like a white or cream marble to it. So in this big cup here, I am mixing the terracotta color and I'm actually using the Jesmonite pigments here. So these are the brand that Jesmonite has. I really like these. It really brightens up the color. And as you can see, I'm like making a mess. Something to note is like, are these pigments, pigments stain so much. I'm even spraying it with alcohol here trying to clean it and I'm probably going to have to come back with some other type of cleaner to try to get this off. So I'm just um, adding a little bit more pigment until I create the color that I'm looking for. Something to note about the pigments, whether you're using mica powder or jasmineite pigments or any other pigments to color, you always have to kind of get a feel for how the product dries because the color sometimes does darken or change just a little bit. So something just to note. So for the first method I'm going to show you, you're going to want to grab a liquid pigment. I highly suggest the jasmineite pigments because they are uh, hold up really well when you're doing this technique. And as you can see, I put a couple of drops and they're not many. And then I took, I have like this silicone toothpick type of tool and I use that to swirl it around. So you can use that and you can control if you want more swirls or less swirls. Uh, something to keep in mind about this, you don't want to do too much pigment because that could create uh, defects in your final product. When you're pouring the material in, you can also play around with like if you just want to pour it straight in or kind of like swirl it around while you're doing it because you can achieve slightly different results that way. And then as always, make sure that you tap your mold um, and then just try to like tap it. Um, up and down and hit the sides of it to make sure you can try to release as many air bubbles as possible. Since I'm looking to reuse this material for the next two methods, I'm just mixing in any of that leftover white that was in this material just to make sure it's more of a solid color. All right, so moving on to method number two. So for this method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, both colors here. So I'm going to grab the terracotta pigment and the white pigment together and I'm going to pour these at the same time. So I'm going to try to get them at the same height roughly and pour them in at the same time and just try to mix them around, swirl them around as much as you want. And then again for this one we're going to want to tap um, and make sure that you release the air bubbles in this one as well. Moving on to method number three. So you'll, what you'll want to do is get either like an empty cup or I'm just using this cup because it had a little bit of white at the bottom and you just want to alternate pouring a little bit of each color um, 
kind of more on the side of the cup. So you can see I'm just kind of pouring it down the side because that will kind of keep the color somewhat separated before you pour it. And then you wanna just pour it into your mold. You can swirl it around a little bit. Um, and then of course, tap and try to remove all the air bubbles. And then it's time to let it cure. All right, so once it's cured, and how to know when it's cured, I always make sure for aqua resin, it's warm to touch and that it feels pretty hard. It's not gonna be fully hardened at this point, so sometimes things can break off at this point, so you still wanna be careful when you remove it out. But like, wow, I love how that first one turned out. I feel like that first method really looks kind of more like these like natural waves, like the ocean always reminds me of that. Um, so for the second one, this is the one where we poured both colors at the same time, kind of um, mixed them around as we were pouring. So this one turned out really cool. I really like how this one is looking. Um, you know, you can see that part of it has like some bigger spots that have like the solid colors, but I think you can kind of like play around with it or if you like it, just leave it, but you could just kind of play around pouring it from a higher height, kind of mixing around. But I think that one like looks really cool and unique. Um, and then moving on to the third method we did, which is when we poured both colors into the same cup, alternating, kind of making that striped pattern and then pouring it in. And this one is also really cool. Um, it looks like a little bit more like blurred marble to me, um, like a little bit more blurry. Um, and they're all just super unique. I love how all of these turned out. Um, I can't even decide which my favorite is. So let me know which one, if you have a favorite, let me know. And if you try this at home, uh, let me know how it goes.